Okay, today's video is going to talk about this calculus review notes. As you go through the questions and you go, oh my gosh, I forgot that. What I want you to do is I want you to get a, a piece of notebook paper. It could be blank or lined or whatever. And I want you to write down the thing that you forgot. Like, oh crap, I forgot the, the, the derivative of tangent was equal to secant squared. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared or something like that. So go ahead and make yourself some, some cheat notes, things that you'd be like, oh, I forgot that, but now I remember it, you know. So some or things like, oh wow, I didn't know that at all. So you want to make make a, a notes on that. So you can steal some ideas from here. These are uh, 10 pages of notes, and I'm going to read through them and point out some things. So this is a review of everything we talked about this year. Uh, here's the limits approaching from the right, the left approaching from both sides. Here's the form for limits. The limit of the function x approaches a, and that answer output is a limit. So the output of the function is the limit. Uh, limits uh, do not exist in three places, oscillation, unbounded increase and decrease, or if the left and the right disagree. The limit of a constant is the constant. So these are the ways we solve the limits. So the, like the limit of seven is seven, no matter what number you're approaching. We did the factoring. Um, when we go to infinity, we divide it by the highest power of x in the denominator. Of course, you can just plug the number in if you're allowed to. The method of signs is where um, you look for, like the problem here, negative five, um, it would be an issue because you'd be dividing by zero. So then you approach from each side and you can see it goes would go up forever and down forever uh, if you graph that. Page two. There's the limit where sine x over x is equal to one. Um, you can always make a table if you had a table. And then there's something that we never talked about, L'Hopital's rule. Um, that's a really handy thing, and it says if you have this fraction situation, um, if you do the limit of the, or do the derivative of the top or the derivative of the bottom, you get the same limit. So what I would do is I'd look up a, a video about L'Hopital's rule. It's, it's very handy, and you can use that sometimes. And of course, you can read a graph to find a limit, whether, you know, where the points are going to. Uh, vertical asymptotes are always created by the division of zero. Horizontal asymptotes are created by limits going to infinity or negative infinity. Uh, continuity, the formal definition of continuity is the, the has to be defined, the limit has to exist, and um, the limit value has to match the definition value. So that means it's continuity. The intermediate value theorem is an important theorem, and all it says basically is um, if you have a continuous function and there's at least one number that's going to be in between the numbers. So if you have A and B and you have something going between it, there's going to be at least one other point in between the two points. Okay, the next topic is derivatives, which are the instantaneous rate of change, slope of the tangent. Um, and average rate of change is the slope of the secant, and the instantaneous rate of change, of course, is the um, it, the instantaneous rate of change is the slope of the tangent. There's two definitions of the derivative. There's the f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, right? Or there's where you're subtracting the points that looks more like slope. Derivatives do not exist in three places: corners infinite increase or decrease, so vertical tangents, and places of discontinuity. So um, you can estimate derivatives by looking at a table and going, hey, how does it change around there? So my example here, it changed about one. Um, you can estimate derivatives from graphs. So you can look at the slope and say, oh, the slope is about a half there. Then there's all the derivative rules. Uh, there's lots of them, right? So constant, product, uh, power, quotient, chain, right? The derivatives of the inverse functions. Neuro, 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 neuro. 
And on the bottom of this page is something really important, is the fact of the mean value theorem. Um, for the mean value theorem to work, it must be continuous and differentiable. That's important. And basically we're looking for the average rate of change is equal to the instantaneous rate of change. The mean value theorem is the way that we find the area under the curve because the mean value theorem's application is the fundamental theorem. But basically if you have a uh, slope of a secant, so point here to here, then there's going to be slopes of tangents that are going to be equal to it. But it only works if the, the function is continuous and differentiable. So um, that way you know that if the mean value de theorem doesn't apply it, probably one of those things is wrong. Like it has like a, a corner. Eh, eh. Page 5, so we know that if the first derivative is positive, negative, zero, it means these things. If it doesn't exist, if the second derivative is positive, negative, and zero, or doesn't exist, it means all these different things here. So there's two kinds of critical points. The critical points are stationary points or points of non-differentiability. A stationary point can be relative max, relative min, or neither. And points of non-differentiability can be discontinuities, vertical tangents, corners. And a corner can be a uh, relative min or a relative max. Um, inflection points can occur when the, um, the second derivative is zero or does not exist, but there must be a sign change. There must be a sign change over that. So these are both examples of inflection points, but you have to have the sign change over there. So here x is 5 or x is 0 where, the, uh, where there's an inflection point. Okay, uh, 7. Uh, Integrals, find, they do four things. They find antiderivatives. They find the area under the curve uh, or between curves. They find volume by rotation or slicing. And they're in the accumulation of change. So if you have gallons per year versus years, you have the total number of gallons for the year. Riemann sums are where you find the area under the curve using rectangles. And you can do left, right, or midpoint. And here's my example for e to the x. Trapezoidal rule. Um, is where you're finding the area with uh, trapezoids and remember the outside ones get used once and all the middle heights get used twice. Eight, fundamental theorem is integral from A to B. That's the fundamental theorem. The second part of it or is where you, you're accumulating area from some point A to X. So that the dummy, dummy variable situation. Um, these are the rules for integration derivatives, you know, the, or integrals. The C can come to the outside. If you go from A to A, your area is zero. If you need to change the limits of integration, you can do that, and you pay the price with a negative sign. You can split integrals up into two parts. You can go from A to C, and then C to B, which is the same thing as going from A to C, if C is between A and B. Um, the uh, the average value of the function, fav, is this formula here, but it comes from this concept of the mean value theorem for integrals. Basically, you're making all of these the same y value, right? You're making a rectangle. So you have the curvy area is the same as the rectangular area. That's the, the height and the base. So you're trying to figure out those. Uh, page 9, area between curves, two curves formula, upper function minus the lower function, or right function minus the left function if it's in terms of y. Slicing is the area of one slice, and then you just integrate from A to B. If it's in terms of Y, it would be up and down versus X, left and right. Um, these are disks and rings and shells. We did not do cylindrical shells. Um, avoid the evil three. Don't worry about that. And that's the part about moving left and right. You're in terms of X, left, up and down. You're in terms of Y. Then differential equations and slope fields. This is the uh, most basic differential equation there is. It's governing our lives right now because it's exponential growth or exponential decay. And right now we're in a growth phase and we're not in school. And there's a solution to it. I did that the other day. And then if you had a, if you had a um, differential equation like this, you could graph it out making something called a slope field. And that's it.